Bro Cam here. Today we're talking mesh tastics. Uh, specifically, my experience with uh, building this little kit, uh, the Helltech V3, uh, this uh, antenna, there's a GPS module and there's a battery inside. And the uh, enclosures are 3D printed. So let's talk about it. All right, so here we got, uh, we're printing the uh, inner shell here and the buttons. That's this middle piece and the buttons. Um, pretty simple print. I just used tree and I think I just used auto tree. I don't think I changed any other settings. Uh, this is the orange case for me and the pink case for my wife. Uh, same settings, just uh, tree supports. Uh, this is building, uh, this is going very fast. Uh, <laughs> this is building the, uh, the, this is the Helltech V3 module. And uh, what I'm going to be doing here is uh, I'm going to go into more detail on this um, after this, but this is just a quick assembly of, of how it goes. Um, so I'm going to solder the uh, wires here to the correct pads, which I'll talk about later. And then uh, I'll be shoving it in, in the case because it's a lot to shove in here. So, uh, so yeah, so we're just getting getting the boards placed. So, uh, I want to stop, um, right after this, uh, after I solder everything to the G. So this is the GPS module over here. Then I'm adding in the first switch. This switch will turn the GPS module on and off. All right. So I want to stop right about there. So, uh, when you're building this kit yourself and you have your 3d printed case, the first thing you should do is uh, when you put your your Helltech V3 on the faceplate uh, with your butt with your buttons, push on the back of it and see if the buttons click. Because like on, on my wife's, um, let's see if I don't know if this camera will pick this up. Can you see this black little spacer there? All right, right there. Uh, follow the screw down. There's a black spacer between the, the pink and the uh, gold. That's a little washer I put in there so that my buttons, my buttons still click. Uh, on mine, since I was aware of it, because I built hers first, pro tip, build your second. That way yours is the better one. Uh, just kidding. But um test fit that first. Cause what happened with me is that I had everything put together basically. And uh, I turned it on to test it once it was screwed together. And I realized, Oh, the it's pushing on the buttons. So uh, you can't use it like that. It'll just keep resetting. So first thing to do is uh, fit those buttons properly. And uh, I'll show what I did on my, on mine, the orange one, how I made it fit properly. Uh, so let's see, I think I'm fixing the solder. I think I broke one of the solder joints. Um, now I don't know the proper way that all of this is supposed to go. Uh, oh, I, I should have given myself more leads on the GPS to the Helltech, uh, cause it's a little tight here. But what I did was, um, I put the Helltech here. Then I fed the GPS module up through this big gap here. And then I push, pushed it back down over here. And that seemed to get me the best fit for like how to move the boards around without the wires getting pinched in different places. So it comes up through this big gap here. Actually here, let me see if I have, might be easier if I pull up the uh, 3D model. So your health tech sits in this groove here and here. And what I had done is I put the GPS module through this hole before I place my Helltech here. And then I put, I bring it around with the wires and then I come back in through this slot here. And you have to uh, have the GPS mo antenna off to do that. But once you do that, then you can have it basically the GPS module sitting here and none of the wires are getting pinched anywhere and it, I think it lays out really well in there like that. Um, so let's go back to the video. So 
So that's kind of a uh, second fitment thing I found. Use with uh, oh, I also used <laughs> Harbor Freight clamps, uh, just to keep these two halves together and keep things from shifting around. I think that's a really big help. Um, I ended up not doing it on mine, but um, I think that was a really big help. So you might want to pick up one of these. It, it's not necessary, but it did make it a little easier for when I'm like moving things around, trying to figure things out. And I didn't have to worry about the two pieces coming apart. Uh, the battery was a little tight, uh, trying to get in there. So when you're just moving around, just be careful when you're pinching wires and you're, you're poking at the battery. It's, it is a lithium ion battery. So you don't want it to go all explodey on you. This is me trying to figure out the screw kit I just bought. Um, you can also see here, this is, uh, where the switches are, the one for the GPS, one for the battery. And how I stuck those in there was I just melted the back side of the, um, I'm sorry. I pushed the soldering iron into the back of the switch, which melted the plastic, um, and let the switch go into the plastic a bit and that held it. Okay. Uh, but on mine, when I did it, it actually, one of the switches came out. So I, um, redid that, remelted it back in. And I also added some CA glue on top of it. So I would recommend doing melting it in and CA glue. I think that's, uh, that's the one right there. This is me trying to figure out the, uh, the fitment issues with the buttons. And, uh, I was doing all kinds of different things before I realized it was actually just the buttons. So, uh, I ended up putting washers in there. Um, Maybe one day I'll go back in and redo it, but not today. So this is what I'm doing here is that we can see, uh, let's see, speed, slower. Uh, I'm just cleaning up the edge with the tip of the soldering iron. I'm at like about 350, 360 in my soldering iron temp. Um, and then I tried, I don't know if you saw that, I tried to, uh, just nip the middle bit here of the, uh, the, the buttons, uh, that did not work. See that here? That did not work. What I found was the best thing is just, um, I've got these tweezers here. Just hold the button, um, with the tweezers and then just take your, this, the flat part of your, your uh, soldering iron and just kind of go back and forth a bit just to melt it and kind of push it down a bit. And, uh, change the dimension that way, have a, a uniform change in height. Um, cause I tried digging at it. I tried cutting at it. I tried just getting the middle out. None of that worked. So, um, yeah, I was digging at it. Then I was trying to dig at it with that. So then I just got to the point where I was like, well, let's just take this and go back and forth. And it took me like five minutes. If that you saw that, like once it, once I started doing that, it was like, oh yeah, it just works now. So just take the tip of your soldering iron and just, just, just lightly, just go back for, forth a couple times, put it back in, check it, see how well it fits. Um, but I wouldn't go too much because these, uh, the buttons, unless you get the, the taller buttons, but I got the really short buttons that are, that are flush. Um, if you go too much, the buttons might, you know, pop out, might like, uh, like fall down into the case. So, uh, yeah, this should just be more of the same here. So let's just go playback speed, normal speed. Soldering, same thing. I screwed up there immediately. <laughs> I soldered to the five volt side. Just to solder to the three volt side. I had to go back and redo that, but, uh, yeah, I'm just soldering the wires. Doop, 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 doop. I'm a, I'm a pro at this at this point. Cause I've done it three or four times on, on hers. So now mine's just, uh, Smooth sailings. Um, I put way too much CA glue on it. Uh, I, everything was sticking to me. Uh, and pro tip, if you're showing somebody you're soldering, if you just have the video going at 25%, uh, nobody or 25 times fast, nobody can tell how bad your soldering is. So. Um, it looks pretty good at 25 times. So I like that. Uh, same thing, screws, turn it on, boom, done. So let's talk about the schematic. 
so the lower uh, schematic for uh, lower schematic this the schematic for this is pretty simple uh, so we've got our lower board we got two switches we got a battery and we got a GPS uh, so this is the uh, the GPS I got you yeah, don't need that exact one but let's I'm gonna flip it over so you can see the actual words on the pads uh, so it's pretty straightforward you're gonna take if you look at all this over here you can see numbers going up and down um, the sides here you've got RST TX uh, 5 volt ground 3.3 volt ground um, I'm sorry 3v3 and ground so what we're gonna do here is uh, we're just gonna go through we're gonna take a uh, red wire a red wire connect to VCD on your GPS module. Uh, and then you're going to go to, I'm going to use, um, white for black since I got a black background. You take your ground wire up to ground. Then you're going to take, uh, when I do it, I like to do, uh, as green as receive. So, um, because uh, you just you can figure it in the app which pin does what so 47 what is what are my lines here there we go that's still bad okay 47 to receive and then on transmit I like yellow so 48 to TX uh, but don't forget we want the GPS to be able to turn on and off so we're actually um, get rid of this this I'm gonna take this up to here and this is a three position switch um, so the basically is the middle is always connected and then if the switch is to the left then the left pin and the middle pin are connected if it's connect it's the switch is to the right then the right pin and the middle pin are connected um, this only matters when you're doing your buttons, your buttons, your switches. So if you see on, I mean, hopefully you can see on mine and my wife's, you see how hers is forward and mine is back. Like that's where the switch is currently. That means hers is off right now, which I don't like. And, uh, mine is, uh, off, but if I switch mine, the same position that hers is in, then mine would be on, but hers is still off. So you got to think about that uh, if you are that much of a stickler like I am. So uh, just pay attention when you're putting your switch into the case, which way it's turned around. And I just wasn't. Um, but so yeah, then uh, connect that middle, middle leg to the VCC on the GPS module and your GPS module is now wired up for power. Uh, then it's going to be the same thing with the battery. Basically, we're going to take. Uh, there's actually a battery connector right here. Oh, I'm on the. That's what's going on right here. Uh, so you're just going to take this connector and just go whoop and plug it right in. Uh, but then to have the switch work, what you're going to do is just same thing with the GPS. Uh, you're just going to cut. You're just going to, you're just going to cut this right here. And then you're going to take one of these, uh, this side. And it's just going to come down here. And you're going to take, yank. there you go. So now the battery is on the switch as well. So in this picture, currently the battery would be on. If you flicked it to the left, the battery would be off. So then you just finagle all this into the case. Make sure your antennas are hooked up. Um, so on the lower, uh, let's see if I got a picture of the front of the board. You see on, I just grabbed this off Google. I don't know whose picture this is, um, but connect the antenna here, you know, right here, connect that, um, which would connect to this big antenna. I don't, I can't see myself. Hold on. There we go. This big antenna. 
shoe. Uh, that that's it for the schematic. Uh, and so, and the this connector is the same kind of a connector that is on the front of the GPS, right here, right here. So that's where your GPS antenna would plug into. So make sure both of those are plugged in before you turn them on. Otherwise, you could damage the uh, the transceivers. Uh, and then that's that's it. You should be good to go and and ready to to mesh tastic and everything. Uh, so that's pretty much it. You should be uh, ready to get up and running with this. Uh, I'll talk about in the next video uh, actually flashing this and uh, setting it up. Uh, via the, uh, I'm going to use an uh, Android app, but I've also got this one set up. Um, wife's got an iPhone, so hers works with that. Uh, we can, I'm um, talking about public channels, private channels, GPSs. Uh, I don't have one yet, but I would like to get up, set up with a rotary encoder so I can have some canned messages that I can go through and, and, uh, beacon out without having to use a phone. That would be really cool. I'm going to put Amazon affiliate links in the description for all this stuff. So if you want to, you can go out and uh, build yours. The only thing that you can't buy is the uh, 3D model. Uh, I'm sorry, 3D model, the 3D printed case. Um, well, actually, I take that back. You can buy that. That's the, the guy that designed these actually sells them on Etsy. So you can just go to Etsy and buy this if you don't have a 3D printer. So um, I'll link both in the description. And uh, go have fun. Go go mesh it up. Let's make meshes everywhere. You know, this 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 is very cool that we can speak without having having to go through a uh, uh, a tower somewhere. It's just uh, you know we the towers are in our pockets. I think that's very cool. So that's it. Seventy three.